if you and everyone will join the house. So in a new text, do you want to go with that? I hope everyone is here now. I hope every heart has been called. I hope everyone will be listening now. Yes, so we have the book of Peter today. Yes, we are in one we are in two Peter three. two Peter three. Yes, so one Peter and two Peter they were written by Apostle Paul. One Peter na two Peter shakani wala posto po. He was writing uh, to Jewish Christians in Asia Minor, which we now call Turkey. I tawa na kunyorera kwa Juda, wariku Asia Minor ya tawa na kuzwara na Turkey. Those Christians were Jewish first. Wali wao wanga wali wa Juda chekta. So when they converted to Christianity, they were now going through persecution. Why are you believing in Jesus? We had our own belief. Why are you believing in Jesus? Why have you changed? So why did he write this message? He knew they loved God. He knew they loved God. But him, Peter, he loved God as well. He also loved to lead. But he knew that he was leading. He came from brokenness. I hope you all know about Peter. Yes, just think of the instances when, uh, when he says to Jesus, I love you most. Even if anything happens to you, I will be there. But then the time came, he wasn't there. He failed to be there. He failed to be at the cross. It's how people were now seeing him. Yes, they heard him say he loved Jesus. But Jesus is now being nailed on the cross and they are saying, Peter, do you know this man? He said, no. Then he said, no. So he knew, he knew people knew that. So that's brokenness because they were now passing words around. So they were now passing words around. As you can see, this is Peter who said, You love Jesus. And you ran away from him. Yes, now Jesus is gone. He's now waiting for him again. Saying, I'm now Apostle Peter. So he was through this brokenness. But he knew he had repented, he had confessed. He was now believing in Jesus. You see what he did? He repented. He repented. He followed Jesus. He started to, to do the work of Jesus. So now he is now calling on these uh, Jewish Christians. He says, you know what? I know you are going through brokenness. Because you have been dispersed from abroad. And now you are being asked why you are believing in Jesus. I am being asked as well. I have gone through brokenness. I know you are going through brokenness. But I am calling on you to just know that. The end of it all is what we should aim for. We should aim to go to Jesus. Let's all read 2 Peter 3, verses 10 to 13. 
That's our main verse for this week. Tichareka Second Peter two. Two Peter three. Two Peter three. Verses ten to thirteen. Yes. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Eleven. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. Twelve. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. Thirteen. But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Yes. Should we also read in Shona? Shona Bible. 2 Peter 3, 10 to 13. So our thing today is walking with God in holiness. Walking with God in holiness. That's our thing. Yes. So Peter says, I have gone through brokenness. <laughs> and they are also through brokenness. But the thing is, let's walk with God in holiness. Even if we are in brokenness, we should still walk with God in holiness. Irrespective of all the sufferings, irrespective of all things that we say they are removing me from God. Peter said we should persevere. Let's hear the Shona Bible. 2 Petro 3, but 10 verse not. As is what I share, Chaya Simba. My tenga at a poor and mutinera. The rim of Chaparat one moto. We any canyons or such remain in Stabulis Wapache. Levy says, O Sinus also, the Chas of Parat one in Zeragi. Immuno Fanirapa, one Vagadi. Munofanera Kurura, Mutene, Uye, no Mukamar. Twelve. Muchatanis, Zuanamai, Uye, Makarandira, Sigabara, Zua Iro, Richawis of Paratva, Pedenga, no moto, Uye, Zrimo, Stanyauka, no Pisa. As he says, Agavimbisa, Isutinotaris Radenga Ija, Nenika Ija, Io Musha, Wavakarura. Fourteen. 13, thank you very much. Up to 13, thank you very much. Yes. So we are talking about uh, the day of the Lord. Yeah, because Peter says, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. You will come like a thief. I know and had a lot of you, a lot of us, a lot of people out there saying, Taka Taka Toka, I know and I've heard a lot of people saying we were just sitting with him or her, but he just he or she just died. We just saw he wasn't there. So Jesus said, I will come like a thief. Just want to show yourself up. So Peter is hitting it all. He says that you need to be ready all the time. And as he is saying, let's walk with God in holiness. Let's persevere. Let's persevere. Because the Lord, I mean the day of the Lord is coming like a thief. He says the heavens will disappear with the wrong. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything 
done in it will be laid bare. Kunyangwe zose, zirimunika zose, zichaparatwa, pako sarapasina. I know maybe you hate people when they are about to go, when they are about to leave earth. Dino zivara kwa kuna kubotuwa wa nipawanenge wa wana kufa. They start seeing things that we don't see. Marotaka kuna zhinu, zhaksa chitambuona. They start explaining things that we wonder whether they are there or not. Marotaka kuna wana kuna wana kuna zhinu, zhaksa chitambuona. But they make you believe they are seeing those things. This is what we are saying because you are seeing this through your spiritual eyes. This was prophets telling people. We know he was repeating the words that were said by Jesus. Because Jesus also said, I will come like a thief. So as he was prophesying, Peter is saying, Peter irrespective of everything that is happening in your life, this is why I was calling you today that come back here even if you've gone through a lot of problems, because at the end there is the day of the Lord and you need to be holy. Kunyangwe mwani yezo, sede mata mzigo, ose ya mwani kusaka nanao, dosaka damu nanai, kutimuzo oke, nekuti, kuyangwa mambo, kwa wapetu. A lot of things happen around this world. A lot of things happen in your own home. A lot of things happen in your work. A lot of things happen even in this church. Everywhere those things are happening. Things that are not godly. Things that are not allowed. But out of those things, even if when they have happened, Peter is saying, Peter Kuti, there is the day of the Lord. You need to come back. You need to bring your heart. Irrespective of how you feel. Even if the heart is hard, even if you are when your day to go comes, it's not about so and so made you sad. It's not about so and so pushed you. It's not about so and so. It is about you. It is about yourself. This is why we are calling yourself. We are calling yourself. This is why we are was calling Jewish Christians. So, so now you can see that the letter that was written to Jewish Christians applies to us today. As you can see, they had the same problems. The same problems. Verse 11 says, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. Yeah, since everything will go. I took it this way. I've got another version that I'll bring, but I'll put it this way. You are rich, you've got everything in life. But when you go, what do you carry with you? What do you carry with you? Nothing. So let's basically say this everything will be destroyed. What people want you to be? What will you be? Because you Nothing. So what you will carry is your heart. What you will carry is your soul. That's why I was saying you need to come back here. Do not carry your cars. Do not carry your homes. Do not carry all your relatives. It will be your heart. It will be your soul. Twelve. As you look forward to the day of God, and speed is coming. 
So how do you speak the coming of God? It is very hard you know, to tell people that you know I'm ready to go. Have you seen that when you fall sick, you call upon all pastors to pray for you? <laughs> it is very hard and difficult to fast. But that's when you fast. I've seen people who are not well. But, but they will tell you I'm on I'm on the seventh day fast. I'm fasting forty days. You ask him to look at you. Why are you fasting? I don't I heard the prophecy they tell you that I have a prophecy because I'm about to die. Sir, they are praying so that they don't die. This thing is hard. This thing is difficult. But we've got to prepare for it. Because it is law. It came in Genesis 3. When God said, Adam and Eve and the snack. Adam and Eve, the yoga. Look at what we have done. Now I've brought death. So death came. Can you see it is a law? Before we start telling each other off, you know, when people pass off in our relatives, are we one another? He or she has been bewitched by someone. So they so did this to them. They have been given poison. They did this and that to them. They have been given poison. 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 But you know, it is a law. As long as you have to put them. And Peter is saying here. As Peter is saying. Irrespective of everything you can think of. Irrespective of you suspecting that other people are killing people. Irrespective of uh, you think people don't love you. It's not about other people. It is about you getting ready to receive Jesus. To receive this day of the Lord. This day when the Lord will come for us. I so much loved it when uh, little Unashi was telling us, I mean, preaching about the journey of the soul. Because hearing that journey on a daily basis, it prepares our minds. We don't know why we come to change. That's when we start to know God is love. But out of that love, Jesus will come for us to remove us from earth. Each and every one when they are on time. When the time is ready. So Peter here was quoting Jesus who said in Matthew 4. Verses 42 to 44. So Jesus said, uh, I will return unexpectedly as a thief. Breaking into an unguarded house in the dead of night. But just because you know, your house will be guarded. You will be guarded in that house. Because now you know we are preaching daily. Revelation 3 verse 3. Jesus warned everyone. Jesus warned to repent. Jesus said we've had enough. Just like we are all here, we've had enough. Because we hear commandments being preached every Sunday. We hear the journey of the soul being preached every Sunday. This is why Jesus in the Revelation 3, 3 said you've had enough. Do you have had enough? 
And we need to wake up from that deep sleep of living as a sinful person. Revelation 16. Verse 15. 16 verse 16. He says, Behold, I am coming like a thief. That is Jesus telling us. Blessed is the one who stays awake. What is staying awake? Confessing and repenting. Ongoing. Every day in your life, you reflect on your life in God. God is when God takes control of the life of a person He created. Have you heard that? Zola Ramar is one of the people who told us about the people who told us about the people who intervenes in the arrangement of what you call your life. Yes, we can decide to live a sinful life. But it will stop us as a chapter when the day of the Lord comes. And when the day of the Lord comes, things change. Things change. So Peter is asking you and me to move from that world of a sinful man because there is a great tribulation that God will come and He will open us. He will ask us directly and openly what we've been doing on it. And so looking at that Bible verse, I hear what Peter is talking about the end times. And I say it is the end times of us, for us, the end times. Yes, Peter is giving the eschatological view of things. Peter and Peter are going to be able to do the same thing. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. They will study the view of the last things. I know there are so many definitions of eschatology. Do not stop the panic. Peter and Peter are going to be able to do the same thing. They will study the view of the last things. But the one I love is this one. It involves four things. There is death. There is judgment. There is heaven. And there is hell. So those are the four things we should worry about. Those are the four things that we should Believe in Jesus Christ and then keep worshiping and praising Him. So we are talking of death here. So Jesus said to his disciples, He's going to heaven, but He will come and take each and every one of them when time is ready. But when time is ready, you need to have prepared. So Jesus put in the child, as in the book of God, the Bible of God. But you should know that nobody knows that their time is ready. We have to be ready all the time. We have to keep on confessing and repenting. Each and every time. Matthew 25 verse 13. Matthew 25 verse 13. Jesus said, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus wrote to him, Chizo Tari Sarayenita Abusiri Misi Nengula. Yes. Abusiri Misi Nengula Wadiru Owe. You don't know the time and hour that I'm going to come. Yes, so there is nothing like I go stealing today and then I'll say, Chizo Tari Sarayenita Abusiri Misi Nengula. 
Because you don't know what will happen during that time before you go to church. There is nothing like I am going to cause a disagreement here and then I will see to it later. The later you don't know whether you reach the later. So let's look at our own lives. Let's look at the sufferings that we are going through. Let's look at the community that is this into the world. Let's look at the scene surrounding us in this world. Let's look at the traditions that we have. Have you seen that? Before you pray, there are a lot of traditions that are just in the families, in the communities, and then we follow them before we pray. Yes. So looking at all that, so the summary is all that is there. The sin is there, it's not going to go away. The suffering will always be there. So the summary is all that is there. The sin is there, it's not going to go away. Sexual immorality, immorality is there in the world. But the choice is coming. Because we've been told by Peter, the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. Let's read a first Peter five, first Thessalonians five, from the beginning to the end. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and days we do not need to write to you. For you know. So we don't need to write about this. It's just repeating what Peter was saying. I don't want to go to the church Peter. That the day of the Lord will come like a thief. There is no date. Just like Jesus said in Matthew 25. Nobody knows the day or the hour. So Paul is saying we don't have the days. We don't know. So Paul is saying we don't have the days. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. It will come like a thief. You will not know. You will not know. So repent. Confess. Be pure. Three. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly is never pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. It doesn't matter where the church is, it is. As name it to the church It doesn't matter where you're praying together. As now as name it to the church. But when the day of the Lord comes, as as the day for you to go when it comes, you will have those pains like a pregnant woman. You will be able to go to the church. That is coming. That is coming. But to be ready, it's just one thing we need to do. Continuous repentance. Continuous repentance. Continuous repentance. To prepare for this pain. We are all going to go through that. Four. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness. So that this day shall surprise you like a thief. It will not surprise you because we are talking today. You are here today, you can hear. You even know how to prepare. 
Kuroto zisema kuti kuno gadzi rasei. You are all children of the light and children of the day. You are all children of the light. You are believers in Christ because Jesus Christ is the light as John 8 says. Muri vana vechiedza. Kuroto tenda kuna Jesu sekuti kumatakaita kushukura mwana. So when we preach I'm sure all these messages they become clear because you are of the light. So we have to get ourselves in the We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, so don't be in between. Both in darkness and in light. Where are you? Wake up those who are sleeping and ask them, where are you? Where are you? Are you in light or are you in darkness? Are you following Jesus or not? When Jesus is speaking, when Jesus is preaching, we don't sleep. Jesus Those are important messages. Those are important messages. Those are important messages. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. So do not sleep. <laughs> we can help all these things to not sleep. Be awake. Be awake. Be awake. I will get up and stand. If someone is going on, I will get up and stand for Jesus. For Jesus. For Jesus. I will get up and stand. I will not sleep. Because Peter says don't Paul says don't sleep. Because you are children of light. Because you respect the light. You respect Jesus. You don't respect Jesus. You have to be standing. Listening to the message. Seven. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Eight. So if you live in both worlds, you will be sleeping through the same one. And where the devil of the Lord comes, he will come to you. You are the person wondering what is happening. But when the message was coming, you were asleep. You didn't respect the sermon. You didn't respect the coming of the Lord. Eight. But when the devil comes, he will come to the Lord. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith. Let's be sober. Let's be sober. Just ask your neighbor whether they are sober. Are you sober? Are you sober? Why are you sleeping if you are sober? Why are you sleeping if you are sober? Peter says you need to be awake. Peter and Paul are not to Karawaka. Yes. Paul says, be awake. Paul says, be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Putting on faith and love is a breastplate. And the hope of salvation is a helmet. Thank you very much. So, I need us to just run down whatever we've been saying. So Jesus comes to collect us unannounced. Where will you be when he comes? Places where you hang around? Are they good places? Will you be with your friends? Are they good? Friends. That will make you keep yourself on the pathway to heaven. Do your friends make you keep believing in Jesus Christ? Because you know them. You keep hanging around with them. Meaning to say you are a child of light, but you are also trying to be a child of darkness if you see that those friends are in between. 
preached around the world. I know that it's there. But I don't know what it is. But I know you know Luke 9 verses 20 to 36. When Moses and Elijah came to investigate Jesus on earth, Moses We call it the transfiguration. To know about the transfiguration. So I need you to know that Moses and Elijah they came to investigate Jesus. Dr. Moses is able to start him. Area na Moses is not able to track him to Jesus. And a lot was happening there. Regis is right in the Bible here. I know Peter, John, the three of them were there, and they could see two men arriving where Jesus was kneeling, praying. Do you know what happened? Papa, Papa, and my disciples were there. Two angels were watching them at the Jesus. No, Jesus was afar. But they were there, they could see what was happening. And they didn't hear the conversation. But they see, they saw those three men all wrapped up in whiteness. And they didn't hear the conversation. Of the light, they couldn't see the men again. So when Jesus says, He's going to heaven, but He will come back for us. He comes to investigate you and me. He comes to investigate you and me. He comes to investigate you and me. Transfiguration. He comes to see how you laid your life on earth. This is when judgment comes. Yes. I'm sure you also remember the man who was on the cross with Jesus. He had sinned, but this is the time that he looks at Jesus when everybody is going against Jesus. And this man believed in Jesus. And he asked for forgiveness from Jesus. And Jesus said, I will see you in paradise today. And I see you in paradise today. 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 So on the very day he died, you know what he was lucky because he repented on the day. That doesn't mean that it will happen to all of us. But lucky as he was, he was told he be seen in paradise on that day. This is why I'm always saying I do not believe in the loud noises that I say to come on rapture. It's when you die. Jesus comes on the day. Judgment takes place. This is why I say in this catology there is death. The judgment. The third thing is whether you are going to hell. The fourth thing is whether you are going to heaven. So those are the four things. So there is rapture when a person dies. You are investigated. That's the second Yes, because they saw him the first time. So when he says, I will come and I will collect you, we will see him. We don't see the people who are going, but they start seeing things. They start telling you I'm seeing things. 
Jesus. 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 Jesus
Because I understand every single Christian in the church. For us to be ready for the day of the Lord. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.